The next article I wanted to talk about is titled Creationist Kent Hovind Sentenced to 30 Days in Jail for Domestic Violence. This is written by Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website. Before I read the article, though, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a recap. Not long ago, I talked about this situation. I talked about Kent Hovind basically being charged with like a DV thing, being accused of body slamming his ex-girlfriend at the time. Uh, This was like six months ago when this took place, I think. I think he was charged with Assault 3. We're going to take a look at the court documents in a minute, and we'll be able to figure out exactly what it was. We'll get to it in a second. But he was charged with, I believe, Assault 3, and he turned himself in when that took place, paid his bail of, I think, $100. His bail was actually set to 1000 And the way the court system works is you have to come up with 10% of that in cash or you have to come up, you have to put like your house up, a piece of property that's worth $1,000. So he paid $100 cash and if he comes back to court on time when he's supposed to, he gets that $100 back. That's how bounty hunting works. So a bounty hunter, for example, your bail is set to $100,000. A bounty hunter will come in, pay 10% in cash, which is 10 grand. You pay the bounty hunter $10,000 to get you out. And you can do it on a payment plan or you can do it later or whatever. And then when you come back to court, the bounty hunter gets that 10 grand back from the court. So they net... $10,000 total. If they had nothing to do with your case, they just go in and ask the courts for like a list of people who never turned up to court and they go track them down, bring them in and they get the money that they put up for bail. That's how bounty hunting works. So anyways, in Kent Hovind's case, it wasn't $100,000. It was a thousand. So he only had to pay 10% of that, which is a hundred. I didn't really want to talk about this when it happened because there were no, like, there was no real information. It was only charges. It wasn't convictions. And I didn't feel like it was right to talk about this until there was a conviction. Well, now there's a conviction. At the time, I felt like it was a he said, she said situation, and we had no way of really knowing which one was true or what happened because we weren't in the room, and it was a personal issue, and I wasn't going to address it until something changed on this issue. Well, here we are. It's changed. He's been convicted. I think he took a plea bargain, which basically means he he just wanted to skip the trial, and he wanted to do his time, pay his fine, and move on with his life. That's my guess. I think it was a plea bargain because trials usually take a whole lot longer to get to. With all that being said, let's take a look at the article, see what Hemant Mehta had to say about this, and then we'll take a look at the actual documents. I mentioned last month that creationist Kent Hovind had been accused of body slamming his ex-girlfriend and spiritual only third wife. We knew that because Cindy Lincoln, which is the person who filed the charges, had filed for an order of protection against Hovind in an Alabama county court in which she laid out the details of what happened. It didn't help that Hovind recorded that the incident, presumably thinking it would make him look good. It did not. That recording is extremely disturbing to hear. I listened to the recording. It doesn't exonerate him, but it doesn't implicate him either. You can't really tell anything based on that recording. He's not innocent or guilty based on what you heard. You're just disturbed by it, and that's it. It's just like mid-fight he started recording and she was like screaming at him and stuff. I don't even know why he he released it. Anyway, let's keep reading. Around that time, we also learned that that Hovind had been arrested on charges of domestic violence in the third degree. There you go. That's what I was talking about earlier. The affidavit, dated July 19th, said Hovind injured Lincoln by throwing her to the ground. So here's the affidavit document that they're talking about here. Affidavit and warrant, state of Alabama, in the district court of... Konica County, Alabama. Before me, a magistrate of said county personally appeared this day, Cindy Lincoln, and made an oath that he has probable cause for believing and does believe that before the filing of this complaint, Kent Hovind, whose name is otherwise unknown to the to the affiant, did commit the crime of assault third, pursuant to section 13A622 of the Code of Alabama, to wit did with intent to cause physical injury to another person cause physical injury to Cindy Lincoln by throwing her to the ground while the victim is a current or former spouse, parent, child, or any other person 
with whom the defendant has a child in common, a present or former household member, or a person who has or had a dating or engagement relationship with the defendant, to wit, spouse, in violation of Section 13A.6.132 of the Code of Alabama and against the peace and dignity of the state of Alabama. Signed, Cindy Lincoln, July 19th. So that's the affidavit they signed, basically. Uh, there's another document that I wanted to look at. This is the actual order. This is like the the result of the hearing and everything. In the District Court of Conica County, Alabama, State of Alabama v. Hovind Kent, defendant. The above styled matter having come before the court for trial and the defendant having appeared in court with his attorney C. Daniel White and the court having taken the matter under advisement, it is hereby ordered and adjudged that defendant is found guilty and sentenced as follows. Fine of $500, which is taxed. By the way, out of curiosity, I looked up the maximum for this charge, assault in the third degree, he got the maximum fine you can get. No more than $500. In my opinion, I don't think fines should exist. I think it should be mandatory community service. They can just convert it to minimum wage, basically. So $500 paid at $7.25 an hour means you get 68 hours of community service. I think that'd be a fantastic way to not punish the poor for being poor and not allow the rich to get out of things by just writing a check. So he got a fine of $500. Court costs are hereby taxed, along with a $100 bail bond fee. Payment is due on or before October 18th, 2021. If defendant fails to pay this amount in full by this date, he shall appear in court on said date at 9 a.m. to show cause, if any, why he shouldn't be held in contempt of court. Defendant is sentenced to one year in jail. The defendant shall serve 30 days in county jail and the balance shall be suspended. The defendant shall report to the county jail on or before October 18th, 2021. Defendant is placed on one year supervi unsupervised probation. So basically, I'm not sure why they picked October 18th for him to start all of this, but all of this really started originally. Look, this affidavit was signed on July 19th and he's supposed to appear October 18th. So that's three months after the affidavit was signed, basically. I, I, I'm not sure if they're connected in some way, but it seems like they probably are. Basically 90 days after the affidavit was signed. That's when he's supposed to appear to go to jail for 30 days. Now, as far as the sentence goes, as I said, he had to pay the maximum fine. He also had to pay restitution. It says defendant shall pay restitution to the victim in the amount of $2,124.72 for medical expenses incurred and paid by her. So she went to the hospital after all this took place, and her she he's paying her hospital bills of $2,100 also. That's fair, uh, in my opinion. So he has to pay her medical bills, he has to pay the $500 fine, and he's going to jail for one year, except he's only staying in for 30 days. The remainder of the year can be spent on unsupervised probation. Now, as far as the fairness of this goes, they didn't really go easy on him exactly. He still spent the, the maximum amount of time on paper, and he spent the maximum amount in fines. So he didn't get out easy exactly. I'm surprised he's spending any time in jail at all. I've been through the court system before. I didn't spend a, a second in jail surprisingly. And, and my charge was way more involved than this one. For the record, I don't want to tell anybody my exact criminal like offense or whatever, because it would be easier to, I don't know, get information on me or whatever. But I'll, I'll give you guys this information. It's basically when I was an addict, I was trying desperately any way I could to find money. And I found money in a less than legal way guess I'll say that. I stole some shit. I'll go that far. I stole some shit. Obviously, I'm a completely different person now than I was when I was an addict, and I'm honestly horrified at who I used to be, but uh, like I said, I, that's the moment that I got my head straight. I got clean, and I'm now a tax-paying member of society, so. In my original plea agreement, basically, the charge was, it was a 1 to 10 sentence, a felony for mine. They said if I paid $5,000 in the next 12 months, they would basically just expunge the whole thing from my record. 
And that's what I did. I managed to pay $5,000 by going to college and getting student loans. And I took the student loans and paid on that $5,000 every time I got the loans until it was all paid off. And then they just erased it. It fucking sucked to be on paper, though. People showing up and searching your house anytime they want, throwing shit around. If they don't like you, then they'll pull books out of the bookshelf and leave them on the floor. They don't even give a shit. Anyways, that should be enough information for to satiate you guys' curiosity. I just don't want to give you the exact charge because it would be harder to hide where I live or, or whatever else if I did. This is a misdemeanor. Mine was not. I didn't spend a day in jail. This guy is spending 30 days in jail. You guys have probably never been to jail, but, or many of you haven't, but it will change you. Jail is not a good place. It's a horrific, dark place that really fucks you up. My uh, ex brother in law, Kylie's mom's brother, Kylie's uncle on her mom's side, spent four years in jail when I was close to him. I knew him. He was in there for four years. When he got out, he used to keep food in his dresser because he was used to having commissary there. He didn't want to be around other people. He used to just want to stay in this little tiny room alone. When you're in jail, you get zero privacy. And, you know, everybody knows that. You know, you got a cellmate that's with you all the time. You don't understand. You have to piss and shit in front of this person. You have to change your clothes in front of this person. You're no longer human when you're in jail. You're no longer human. You're an object, basically, when you're in prison. You're an object who will do what it's told when it's told. No questions asked. And in fact, you are a slave. You are actually, literally, definitionally, a slave in prison. That will fuck you up, too. If you are told to do a job, then you do that job, and you don't get paid. You don't have to be paid anything at all. Nothing. You don't have to be paid shit for doing that work. And that's where California gets a lot of its firefighters when they are out there putting out the fires. It's wrong. It is so fucking wrong how people treat prisoners. So anyways, I've been in trouble. More trouble than Kent. Was not a violent offense. Mine wasn't, though. And that's how I just got it completely removed from my record because I did my time on paper. I paid my fines, I paid my bills, I talked to my probation officer, I did what I was supposed to do, and followed all the rules, and met with them when they wanted to meet, and opened the door when they wanted to search my house, passed the drug tests, and moved on with my life, and I got it expunged. It was not a fun time in my life, but that's the price that I pay for living in poverty and living the hard life that I had lived at that point. Point here is... My charge was more serious than Kent's, even though it wasn't a violent crime. And he's still spending time in jail. That surprises the holy hell out of me. Why is he spending time in jail? Very surprised by that. My guess is that he was willing to do that for a so that he could be on unsupervised probation. Because he's already used to being in jail. He was in jail for like eight fucking years or some shit. He probably knows the ropes. He's probably had to shit and piss in front of a cellmate before he's already been a slave before he knows what it's like and it's okay if he can be on unsupervised probation that's fine with him but guess what happens when you go to jail you lose everything you lose everything i can't overstate this imagine you are arrested tomorrow and you have to spend the next month in there no communication with family members, no communication with basically anybody. And if, if they do communicate, then they're paying like a massive amount of money for it, for every single phone call. You'd lose your job, you'd lose everything. It's not good. I, I'm not in favor of Kent here. I'm not his cheerleader. I, he deserves this. If he really did do this, which it looks like he did, he deserves it. I'm glad he's going to jail. I'm just advocating for prisoners' rights more generally, not just for Kent. Anyways... Let's continue with the article and uh, see what Hemant Mehta had to say about it. Hoven paid a $1,000 bond and was back at Dinosaur Adventureland to record new live streams. Without telling his audience about his own situation, he urged viewers to remember that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Funny thing about that, the line only works until you're proven guilty. On Tuesday, a judge ruled that Hovind is guilty. Longtime Hovind watchdog and former IRS appeals officer Robert Beatty 
got his hands on the relevant documents. Here's the bottom line. Hovind was sentenced to one year in jail, but the judge will let him serve 30 days in a county jail beginning on October 18th at the latest, while being placed on a one-year unsupervised probation. Hovind also has to pay $500 fine, court costs, $100 bail bond fee, and restitution of $2,000. Hovind is forbidden from having any contact with Lincoln or coming within 500 feet of her. I'm okay with that. That's that. All of this is fine with me. Hovind must surrender all his firearms to the Conica County Sheriff's Office. I'm even more fine with that. Absolutely love it. Big fan of that rule right now. I repeat, Kent Hovind is going to jail for physically assaulting his ex-girlfriend. It's not his first time behind bars, and it's not even close to the first time he's been in trouble with the law. Interestingly enough, during Hovind's live stream on Wednesday night, he didn't mention anything about his predicament to his viewers. Why does all this matter? As I've said before, Hovind has clout among creationists and spends part of each day dissecting Bible verses on his YouTube channel while trying to brainwash people at his dinosaur adventure land. He wants you to think that Christianity and purity and goodness and scientific integrity are all linked together. Yet he's also a domestic abuser who will serve jail time for his crimes, and that should be brought up whenever his name pops up. Yeah, I guess I agree with that. Um, originally, I didn't want to go down this road because nothing was really proven. I mean, Hovind has a point here. You are innocent until proven guilty, but he's been proven guilty by a court of law. I mean, here we are, so what else can you say, you know? I don't like dragging people through the mud or anything like that, but I feel like this should be on record. I, I feel like people should know about this. Respect for being honest about your past, yeah. I've had a pretty hard fucking life, man. Pretty hard fucking life. But here I am. My life is not as hard as it used to be, and that is the... It's a direct result of me getting clean.